Yeah, something like that.
Hello, playtime. I hope you can hear me. We're broadcasting from the far side of the moon using a homemade walkie talkie. And we are joined on cello from Hilversum in Holland, the wonderful Ernst Reisinger. Hello, Ernst. And from Edinburgh, Graham Stephen on the guitar. And uh, Ivan Simon Timmy are saying that they can hear us, which is a good sign. <laughs> and from the west side of Edinburgh, Mado Kuribe on the bass. He has daylight out his window. What's this? And at the bottom, last week when I said he was, I said he was from Gra in Guatemala, which was, I thought it was a joke. Well, no, it was a joke, but I thought it was obviously a joke. But somebody said, was he really in Guatemala? So I'm not going to make those jokes anymore. Um, from Pathhead, a mile from me, Martin Kershaw. <laughs> uh, so would you like to say anything to the audience before we head into a sonic interrailing journey. <laughs> okay. Marty, final word? <laughs> right, I think we should just... Mario? Let's, should we go? Let's go.
Are we taking a break or what? Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Ernst Reisiger from Hilversum. Thank you so much, Ernst. That was absolutely brilliant. Martin Kershaw from Pathhead. Graham Stephen. <laughs> Graham Stephen from Edinburgh. And And the wonderful Mano Kitty Bay on the bass. Somebody said, um, somebody said, this is, Mario isn't good looking enough for this segment. What he meant by that was, it was such a beautiful, se he just said, this is beautiful, Mario isn't good looking enough for this segment. I think he meant that even how beautiful Mario is, he wasn't good enough, beautiful enough for that segment. Cello Lovely Mad was one of the comments. 
This reminds me of hunting bison in the Bayalawiza forest. <laughs> Groove Bartok sure. by Tony Dolly Evans. Who's watching? Written by an experienced person. Oh, sorry, I'm referring to the last uh, comment. <laughs> by, by being too, too ugly uh, to play, I, I, know, I, I heard a story that Hermeto Pascal when the when the bossa nova started in in in, in rio you know hermeto pascal is of course great arranger and, and player but he was not allowed to play in the ensemble because he was too ugly <laughs> that 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 is true is it but he got his back big time yeah uh, yeah, yeah he sort of <laughs> took a revenge off of that one absolutely <laughs> is it possible to be too too fat to fit into your zoom quadrant I didn't get that. Quadrant? <laughs> well, quintant. <laughs> quintant. So listen, we're going to take a break. We're going to see an interview with next week's guest, the wonderful young saxophonist, Harry Weir. Please don't go, anybody. And we'll see you in about 18... Well, if I can do the press the right buttons. 18 minutes from now. Hey. Hey, Tom. Hey, Harry. How you doing? I'm good. Yeah, how are you? All right. I love your background. <laughs> what is that? Is that like Kandinsky or something? It's like, what's the guy called? Again? I think Bocciani or something. Right. It's just, I can't remember where I found it, but I think just one of my mates was talking about him. Yeah. <laughs> well, listen, welcome to... Um, Interval interview number 25. You're the first person I've interviewed that I've never met before. So this is kind of cool. <laughs> so I, I don't think we've ever met before. Is that, is that right? Um, I don't think we have. I don't actually think we have. I mean, I've definitely known about you for a while, but no, I don't think we've met. No. Yeah, I've, I, well, I've known about you for, as well, and you, we look like we could be related. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe something, maybe something with that, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> where, where were you born and when? Uh, so I was born in Paisley in right. September 1996. 1996? Yeah, man. Bloody yeah. hell. No. <laughs> that makes yeah. me feel old. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's all right. No, it's not your fault. Yeah. It's um, yeah. Right, so that makes you, what, um, 25? Yeah, 24. 24. Okay, and um, so how did you how did you get into jazz and saxophone and all that from from that kind of how did that happen? Um, so well, my dad, I grew up around my dad listening to a lot of uh, Miles Davis. He still got that massive painting in the living room. <laughs> what of Miles Davis? Well, yeah, in fact, it's not painting. Do you know who's it? It's Anton Corbine. Okay. Photos of people. He's got one of the photos of Miles in the in the living room. Um, so that's been in the house since I've been there. Um, but yeah. Uh, so you were kind of doomed from the start, really? Yeah, basically, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's one way of putting it. Um, but yeah. So I don't know. I've always listened to, I've always heard, like, jazz. I suppose. Like one of the earliest albums I remember hearing was uh, Miles Ahead. Okay. The Cadiz. Yeah. I always remember hearing that in the living room when I was young. Um, but yeah, I started playing saxophone when I was 15. My first teacher was actually Paul Toundro. So no. No, it was. Yeah, it was my first Your sax- first teacher was Paul Toundro? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was starting wow. off. I didn't know it, but yeah. <laughs> that's that's kind of a stroke of fortune. It was actually, it really was. Um, yeah, no, obviously, I mean, Paul's amazing, but um, yeah, showed us, he set us up, basically. He's one of the guys that set us up. So I started doing Paul's summer school right. as part of the Glasgow Jazz Festival. That was great, actually. That was great for meeting people and getting together and actually learning a few tunes and stuff. Sure. But then. I mean, then then it kind of blossomed from there. I started my first band with guys I met from that summer school. 
and we were doing like funk and stuff like that, and it was all fun. God, average white band tune here or there. Um, and then eventually I got in at the Royal Birmingham Conservatoire. Okay. And just for a couple of years. And right, and, and are you, are you finished there? Yeah, I finished there. I did three years and then came back. Yeah. Two interviews ago, I was talking to Rachel Cohen, who was at Oh, Birmingham. yeah. Yeah, and, of course, yeah, yeah. And we were talking about that whole thing of... Um, you know, going somewhere and well, in fact, I was talking to Laura Jared about something. Going somewhere to study, and then yeah. meeting meeting people, and then deciding whether you come back or whether you stay there, or you know, yeah. it's quite a big. It has quite a big impact on 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 a domestic scene because if all of our good players yeah. are going away to study and then they stay where they've gone, uh, yeah. and don't <laughs> come back. You know what I mean? But so it's interesting yeah, that you it. chose to come back, and what what were the factors in that decision? Other than, you know... I mean, main, mainly, I mean, the big decision really was, uh, well, I just, Graham had asked us to join Strata. Um, All right, okay. Before, so that was just when, that was just after Strata had really started, like, playing regularly, I suppose. So I just started that, and then I just... Basically, basically, I joined Strata and then was like, oh, Graham's amazing, I really want to do a band with him, and then that kind of... Did you kind of get a sense that this something was yeah. happening in Glasgow and you wanted to be part yeah. of it? Well, this is it, and there was, there was so many people wanting to start bands or that were starting bands at the time, compared to, in Birmingham, I mean, even, I don't, I don't know how it is now, I mean, don't get me wrong, Birmingham was full of amazing players, but there was nobody with any like proper band really. It was really, ju- it was really just that, and like I was starting to get work up here. Yeah, yeah. So I'd rather do it if I can make it work. I think I'm that's great, though. I mean, I, I, I remember um, in my sort of mid twenties, I was in, uh, I had, I spent about a month in New York doing some lessons oh, with um, Joe Morello and. Oh, and I was sitting in quite a lot, uh, just at jam. You know, there was a sort of jam session scene there, yeah. and, I, and, I, and I, I got offered a couple of gigs, and it was like, fuck, you know, people go, like, you free, you jam, you free for a gig, and yeah. And I didn't have a drum kit or anything with me, uh, but I thought, fuck, I could actually imagine getting a foothold here. It wasn't on a it wasn't on a particularly high level of the New York scene, but it was like that's how you could. I could. I could see a way in, but actually, it, it was a similar thing at the time. There was this buzz about about Scotland and Edinburgh and the, the vibe at home, and I was like, no, I'm, I want to go home. I want to because I, yeah. I knew I knew shit was happening, and by, you know there was a sense of the group of musicians I was part of were about to burst, you know. And yeah, it was, it was yeah. a kind of exciting time for that. And, and I think that's great when you sort of, you want to be somewhere because you can feel something's happening. Yeah. Right? Well, this is it. This is it. Nice. And it, especially over the last like, couple of years in Glasgow, it's really starting to pick up. And, you know, like, because it's quite a small, well, I mean, it's not, it's not really, but I mean, relative to like London or something, it's quite a small scene. But, yeah. We all kind of know each other and we all play quite a lot between different projects, whether it's a jazz project or whether it's like some or I don't know, like a hip hop thing or something, you know? And, and who are your sort of main, um, you know, musicians that you love that are really inspiring you at the moment and that you're kind of guys okay. or girls, whoever? Yeah. Who are uh, your people? I, t- I mean, in terms of what you're listening to. Yeah. And- all right, okay. So. I mean, I know this is this might be cheating a bit, but like, Pharaoh Sanders just brought out his new album with floating points. Uh, I'm stunned by that right. album. It's so cool. Um, it's because it was one of those things where there was all this hype about it, and I was like, oh shit, I really don't want Pharaoh to put an album out and for him to be like done in, like you know. <laughs> but then I heard it, and I was like, oh thank God. You still sound really good, man. It's fine. Yeah, cool. But yeah, so oh, I've got to check that out. 
Oh man, it was really good. Was yeah. Really good. yeah. Yeah. It was cool. He must be he must be getting on. Yeah, he's like eighty, man. He's eight he's wow. like eighty or something like that. It's mad. He's like a mad vegetarian, so he'll be like, what is a thing? But yeah, that's something I've been listening to a lot recently. Um, I mean, outside of that, like, artists that I'm willing to, you know, maybe, definitely Shabaka Hutchins. Okay. It's like the Sons of Emma and Comets Coming and stuff like that. I really love that music. Um, that's something. Else. I mean, a lot, I love what. There's a rapper from Sterling who's doing a lot of stuff at the moment called Carpenter. Okay. I really like what he's doing at the moment, actually. If, if any of our listeners wanted to check you out before next week, yeah. um, something we can d- point them at online? Yeah, absolutely. What would you say best represents your, your vibe? Oh, dear. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I suppose the, the Aku album's out, so I suppose that's pretty... Accurate representation of what I'm I will play a bit of it under this. So. I'm brilliant. Thanks, thanks, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so I'd, I'd point folk towards that. Uh, Blind Fury, it's out on Spotify, Bandcamp, all that good stuff. Um, now yeah, this that- this interview's going out um, in the interval of the Ernst Rising uh, playtime. Yeah. I just wondered what you thought of the the first set. The first the set that we've just heard. Yeah, the first set that was just heard. Um, <laughs> and like, it blew me away, man. Like, <laughs> I, I couldn't believe what I heard. I can't believe what I've heard, man. <laughs> well, well done, well done. Because I, I do, I do that. I do that with just about everybody, and most yeah. people get it. But Paul Tandro, your erstwhile teacher, was like, "Yeah, uh, well, I've not heard it. I mean, how can I answer that?" <laughs> <laughs> it was just like. Uh, okay, so <laughs> final final question yeah. I've got for you is, which which is really interesting to talk to you about this because um, it's sort of like a bit of a running theme out of some of the recent interviews is, yeah. Um, you're a young jazz musician from Scotland trying to build a career, and yeah. how do you, h- how are you deciding whether it's, you know whether it's best to stay in so there's two parts to this question where you locate yourself and is that is that something you might change at some point or how are you feeling about where you base yourself is the first question and the second question is about whether you you know how you feel you is your music scottish jazz and if so why and is that something you feel that it's important for your career to to use that in some way to kind of put yourself on the international map as being from a place, you know? I'm quite happy to be based here, man, definitely. Like, there's enough, like, people doing interesting stuff in Glas- in Scotland. Well, particularly, I can really only speak about Glasgow because that's where I'm most of the time, but... Pathhead would... as well. Pathhead's rocking. Yeah. yeah. That's, where, that's where I live. <laughs> man, well, if you're living there, man, like, that's... That's good. Oh, I'm the least. Yeah. I mean, do you, <laughs> do, do you know Lao? Lowry? No, Lao, the folk band Lao. Oh, yeah, do you? Martin, Martin from Lao actually. lives here. Kareen Paul what lives here. Oh, Dave really? Milligan lives okay, here. I didn't know that. I think there's there's enough of us want to make it work here, man. Yeah. yeah. I think that's the main thing. Like, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter what it is that we're doing. Because, I mean, for example... Like myself and Graham are doing completely different music to what, say, Fergus is doing, yeah. or Shabbat, or I don't know what Dave Bowden's doing with Mezcla. Like it's a, it's a real mixed bag, especially with support that we're getting now. Support from like Edinburgh Jazz and like Rebecca Vasmont and all these people like, trying to actually boost us. You know, I don't know. I mean, in terms of like other scenes, I mean, I, I mean, I'd love to go to Norway more. I think that's where some of the most successful experimental music is coming out of. I don't know, Jan Bang, Ivan Darsa, R.V. Henriksen, all these amazing these amazing people. And even more like, well, I don't mean pop, but more poppy side of that, like yeah. Jagger Jazzist and people like that. But I mean, yeah. as, well, as well as the sort of creative, um, 
because they're a similar size country to us, but that yeah. creatively they're they've got a real high high quality, consistent you know breadth yeah. of material. But I mean, um, they've also just got so much support and. No, like, yeah, I mean, I, I was doing thing. this tour in the States a few years ago. We did the Rochester thing and we did a gig in Buffalo the day before Paul Nielsen Love showed up with like a 10 piece band Ooh. all in this massive bus. And, and it was all paid yeah. for by the Norwegian government, but it was absolutely brilliant band. The sort of support they get is wonderful. You know, so is, yeah. I think those things maybe go together, you know, the quality and the support. Oh, absolutely, yeah. I would agree. Because I remember actually, because we went. To Oslo with Strata, um, yeah. I think I think uh, Fergus Fergus was meant to be playing with me that night, and he yeah. Ah, oh, 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 oh man, got to go yeah. to Oslo. Oh, yeah, okay. he... <laughs> <laughs> he only changed time zone like three times in twenty four hours or something. Yeah, God bless him. He 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 did his best, yeah. you know. And there's not there's no way you're not going to do that just to play well, yeah. do something with me in Edinburgh. <laughs> <laughs> totally understand. What I was really sort of trying to pin down on is they've got this sort of sort of identity as a musical scene, and obviously there's a lot of variety around yeah. it, but it has this sort of sound, yeah. and that's enabled them to become really recognised as a real centre of jazz in, in in Europe and in the world. And yeah. do you feel there is potentially, or there is a Scottish sound, and you know, there's obviously all the traditional music happening here, and there's various other things that could yeah. or one could, or one could just go. I don't care about that. I just want to be doing what I, I want to just do my my own music. I want to be influenced yeah. by people from other countries. I don't want to have to fit into any Scottish bracket. How do you feel on that sort of thing? Yeah. I think I think that's definitely a possibility here. The thing with the Norwegian scene is they do have a defined sound, but it's through it's through like the depth of like players they have there. And it's only it's only really because they've been active for longer than say us, for example. Like even back to what the seventies when like Jan Gabrick was kind of like. But, but, I like, think, like, I think we've Jan been Gabrick active was, the same length of time. We haven't co- qualified for as many Jazz World Cup finals as yeah, <laughs> yeah, as Norway sort of thing. Basically, what I'm trying to say is, it comes out of just there being loads of players. The amount of players that are starting to do more stuff in Scotland, I think that's definitely a possibility. I think it is just about owning the space, I suppose. Just owning Scotland and being like, right, we're all from Scotland, but we don't all sound the same. Like we're doing, Scott Alto's doing sort of new jazz, like hip hop stuff. Strat is doing kind of weird noise rock mixed with Steve Ray. And Figs is doing his stuff, you know. I think it's just more, it's just characters, really. I think. And if we develop enough characters, I'm sure that will happen. Sure. Well, it'll be interesting to see what you make of playing with all these old guys next week. Oh um, man, I can't wait, man. I can't <laughs> wait. I watched that Ian Balmy thing like twice. It's so cool. Like, That's brilliant. Well, man, it's so good. <laughs> well, we're, we're really looking forward to having you with us, yeah. and um, I'm going to have to say goodbye because. I would I would like to keep going, but we just haven't got enough time to fit that all in anyway. So, no worries. but I'm going to say goodbye and see you okay. next week. All right, and, thanks, Tom. Cheers. And, and thanks a lot for doing the interview and doing the gig and everything. And yeah, can no I wait to, to play with you next week? Yeah, man, it's going to be great fun. Um, yeah, thanks so much for asking me. I really. I know it's cool. It. Hello, playtime listeners. We are back live with the wonderful Ernst Reisiger on cello. Let's hear it for Ernst and Marty Kershaw and Graham Stephen and Mario Caribe and Tom Bancroft is me. And I really enjoyed talking to Harry Weir in the interview. I think he's a really w- lovely guy and I really enjoy his music and like he he, he twitched me on to some new stuff that I hadn't heard. And um he reminded me of me of me a little bit when I was that age because I kind of th- I got a feeling that he didn't think anything had ever happened in Scotland before now. <laughs> Jazz wise. And I, I kinda remember th- sort of feeling the same way. And then I, I learned that actually one of the reasons why 
I didn't know much about the people that came before me is because they weren't they were there but they, they hadn't no, they didn't nobody told anybody about them or they'd gone somewhere else and uh, so there's lots of riches in our country that are not uh, promoted enough or have haggis, whiskey, short yes. bread. But there's another beautiful generation of young guys that are really coming through with a lot of talent and beautiful spirit. So, And he's joining us next week, so that's great. I'm looking forward to that a lot. Okay. Ernst, how are you feeling? So, life, yeah, man. Nice. This is nice. It's very nice to, it's very nice to be playing with you. Um, it's really, really wonderful. So, thank you. Thank you. you would Likewise. you like to tell everybody about this instrument that you're actually going to play now? Yeah, it's it's. Uh, um, I, I'm, I feel weird because I'm I'm a little endorsed by these uh, very nice. It's it's a Steinberger actually. Do you have to contractually Steinberger Steinberger yeah. guitars? Great. Uh, Ned Steinberger made this. Do you have to play it on every gig, otherwise you get fired? No, no, I only play it at home. I, I, I rarely take it with me. Uh, uh, it's just traveling with two instruments is ridiculous. Uh, I cannot do it. I mean, traveling is ridiculous right now. Anyway. Is the so fingerboard... I can do this. Yeah. Is the fingerboard uh, curved, like the cellos? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's exactly the same. Yeah. It has also a, like you know it has a, like a stand and a, and mm -hmm. it has a strap. So I I play like this anyway. <laughs> Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so um, that is your introduction to the electric cello yeah. and a little word from our sponsors. <laughs> yeah, but that's good. Thank you, Ned. <laughs> okay, shall we, shall we head off? Shall we go? Yeah, let's see. Okay, here we go. See you at the other side.
Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> us rising girl on the cello from Helversum in Holland. That was wonderful. Ooh. Wow. <laughs> that was really, really fun. And uh, um, muted for a while. <laughs> Graham, was, <coughs> Graham was muted for <laughs> the first part of that. He was? Yeah. And I can see him playing and there's nothing coming out. I was thinking, what's he? He's either miming <coughs> or, or oh. I, I sent him a text. Did you get my text? <laughs> 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 
And then, uh, so Graham from Edinburgh and Mario Caribe from Edinburgh by Brazil and Martin Kershaw. Wow. Ernst, thank you so much. We got lots of applause. Welcome, lads. It was really, really fun. Amazing, um, Ernst. That's wonderful. It's fun. Um, it's fun. Are we off the air? No, we're still on the air, so we oh, can. So we can't curse yet. Well, you can curse if you want. It's no. There's you no. Can fucking curse. <laughs> there's nobody gonna be upset by that. It won't be the first time. Has anyone out there got any questions for Ernst before we? Um, there's lots of beautiful comments. Totally excellent. Lot Ros Rigby is watching Ernst. Who's Rick? Ros Rigby from the Sage. And Marion Grimes said, "Fab, don't stop." Who's on the theremin? Very epic. This is epic. 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 Get us gigs. Quantum Come entanglement. On. Quantum entanglement was a good one. So, who is doing what live stream monster? Great stuff, guys. So, <laughs> going some now, cello guy, shake a leg, Mario. Don't know what that means. <laughs> um, so, lots of, lots of um, flight crash landing of the bumblebee. I like that. That's quite good. <laughs> <laughs> Not bad. This would be a great touring band, said Simon Tumia. So he can get us a tour. We'll, we, we're on the ground. We've got gigs. Whoa. Woo um, so um, here we go. Here's a question for you, Ernst. How long will Ernst's supplies last in that basement? What <laughs> supplies? How long my supplies last? Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. I think Not they so think. Not long anymore. I just paid my rent, so I'm okay for a month. That's it. <laughs> I think they it's think you're locked in a bunker or gents something. And ladies, were there any ladies uh, in the audience, or are yes. we all men above fifty? <laughs> are we? Are we in that? I have a question for the audience. Yeah, there's plenty of women in the audience. Is Ro Ros? I know that you know Ros Rigby. From. I, I hope it's not an insult that I <laughs> forgot. <laughs> <laughs> so well, she. She. Oh, she's offline suddenly. God. No, she booked to the Gateshead <laughs> Jazz Festival, where we played together. No, I know what it is because you you had your concussion, so you forgot everything. I forgot everything. Yeah, and Marion Grimes is watching. Uh, I, somebody says, "I identify as a lady over 50. Now that's. <laughs> we're not going to go there, Ivan. So, um, uh, I think it's. I think there's not any more questions coming in. Good. <laughs> I think it's time. Good. Please, please, can you donate some money if you're watching and, and you can? We'd appreciate that very much. And I think it's probably time for me to go and have a non. I've I've stopped drinking so for a month. So a non-alcoholic gin with my wife. Can we say a huge thank yeah. you again to Ernst Reisiger? Yeah. Woo! Thank you, Les. Thank Wonderful you. man. Wonderful. Absolutely Wonderful. fantastic. Wonderful. It's fantastic to play with you. And hey, well, it's a, it's a great, uh, great uh, thing you're doing, inviting people. And, just, and it seems technically like, you know, this is the first time I really think like we're playing together. It's nuts, isn't it? I don't know quite, I still don't quite understand how it works. No, me too. And uh, I, I think I decide not to want to know. <laughs> Just yeah. like with the speaking. If if any anybody works it out, it will stop happening. That's what's. I, uh, I have a question. I actually have a question for for Ernst if we have time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, just um, what what is it like working with Werner Herzog? Because uh, um, you've done quite a few uh, films with him, haven't you? Yep. It's it's lovely actually. It's it's yeah. uh, it's a life. It's uh, it changes all the time. Every project is is definitely a different one, and uh, the diversity is enormous. And we also, when Werner 
works, there is usually there's very rarely the same production company involved. Mm -hmm. So that means that it's always the trick to you know to to be sure that actually this project will be realized. And uh, so th there's a lot of uh, um, that's where a lot of adventure is also involved. Yeah. But the working with him is wonderful. He has amazing ideas and stories to work on. And I hope he uh, stays healthy for a while. So, uh, because, yeah. you know, he's getting there age wise. We did okay. 10. I did 10. Where, where, what, is, what is your definition of there, Ernst? Well, my father told me when I was 30, so, you, well, you're well on your way, you know, <laughs> or <laughs> to your death. <coughs> wow. So, uh, I doubled it up a bit more right now, and, and <laughs> Werner is 12 years older than me. Okay. So, but he, he's strong, and, and he got his uh, shots already. I'm, I'm jealous. I just heard. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, we have an audience member, Ernst, called Ivan Clark, who last year won our Audience Member of the Year Award for best consistent comments. And he just said, Herzog is like you guys, always different, always the same. Which is kind <laughs> of a beautiful thing to say. Lovely, that's true. Yeah, I'm, I'm bringing out an album uh, 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 with the compilation. I started my own label, and I actually next week I'm going online with an album called Chronicle. Uh, okay. With uh, with a sort of a choice of tracks. And F from Herzog Films. Yeah, yeah, and there's there's some unreleased yet, and some older recordings, because when you have ten movies and over twenty years, it's it's it's. It becomes interesting to put uh, the music in a different order and it becomes uh, also a different story. So I'm doing that. And I bring out two cello concerts also. So wow. two albums and then 18 reissues. So I'm going like bam, right away. I'm, I'm working on it right now. It's, it's a lot of work, but it's, it's fun. It's we called spring music. So I'm making advertisement for the first time. Spring music. What's the, what's the website address? springmusic.nl and I'm not online yet, I'm almost online. There's only a, a record player of which I don't have money at the moment to, to release uh, vinyls, which I I'm dreaming of doing. But uh, it's all digital right now. But it's on many, many, uh, uh, many platforms already. I'm online already, but my website is almost there. Yeah, I'm having fun doing that. It's uh, it's it's ideal COVID work. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, <clears throat> um, I'm I'm going to check it out, and uh, I hope I hope all of our audience go and buy some stuff in in, in eleven days. Is that? That'll be on download. Please don't stream. The yeah. Progress. <laughs> <laughs> download in 11 days we have this concept I don't know, I don't know what uh, I mean in this time and uh, a day I, I tell you honestly you know for musicians in uh, oh, I don't know what a business model is I don't even have a clue you know it's like streaming everybody streams so that means musicians yeah, might get gigs maybe but that's it from uh, releasing albums uh, it's it's actually I don't know if it's if there if it will bring anything, but I'm doing it anyway. <laughs> I have this idea that if you're releasing 18 records reissues and two or three newer things, you could sell them all in a piece of furniture, so that they <laughs> buy like a wardrobe from you know and it arrives in in with the records inside of the furniture and it just comes in and it gets placed in their living room. In fact, my my website looks a little bit like all boxes it doesn't have buttons it's like it's sort of a sort of a tombola with the <laughs> and, and you have to f 
figure your way around. It's going to be fun. You should, you should check it out. Anyway. Anyway, I think it's time to go. Yes. Thank you so much, Ernst. Ladies Thanks, and gents, I'll say. It's Take care. All the best. Thanks for having me. Wonderful. We will see you, uh, audience and lovely people out there. We will see you next week. Thank you very much. And what what the, do the Scottish day if not if not if not in the street in the windy? <laughs> <laughs> do you know what, is that windy means window? Yes. Yeah. Windy. In the windy. I know. Well, the only actual true Scot here is Graham. So you t can you pronounce that first, please, Graham? I'm not a Sassenach, that's for sure. <laughs> All right. Is, oh, go on, Graham. Is he going to say? Are yeah, you going to say? Go on, Graham. Graham. Do you know that saying? Exactly. Beautiful. Right. All right. Good so. night.